Well, thank you for joining us today for the Maranatha program. We are always thankful that you take this time and join us to worship the Lord together. And happy Father's Day to the fathers that are watching. And you know what? Here at Maranatha, we call it Men of God Day. And we honor all the young men age 18 and older. And remember, I said all of you are young men, right? Young men at heart. But you know what? We want to honor you today. We thank you for your uh, work for the Lord and everything that you do. Let me draw your attention to the bottom of the screen. There is a prayer number there, 217-423-2452. And that number is there for you to call Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. And we believe in prayer. And if you're walking through something and you just don't know what to do, we want to pray with you because the Lord will help you. Just call upon the name of the Lord and He will help you. And we want to pray with you also. Okay, well, let's go into the service today. God bless. Hey, we've been, uh, this is a day about fathers, but there is uh, one father that we don't want to miss today. And we want to give all praise and glory to our heavenly father, the father of us all. Can we just give him a round of applause? Can we just thank Abba Father today for his goodness and his mercy in our life? Hallelujah. You know, you may have had a very, Father's Day may be difficult for you because uh, your father may already have uh, finished his journey, may be home in heaven, and you're missing him today. Or you may have had a father that abandoned you as a child or was maybe not the kind of father, maybe an abusive father. It's, it's different for every person or what their journey has been. But I want you to know you do have the very best father ever in Abba Father, amen, who loves you and cares for you and uh, is always there. And so uh, on this Father's Day, let's remember that wonderful relationship. And he, he allows us to call him Abba Father, which means dear daddy. Isn't that wonderful? Just like a child crawls up on the lap of the father and just, uh, you know, uh, feels so safe and so secure uh, that's the kind of relationship God wants us to have with him. And, um, you know, this is all about being a man of God today. Our sermon title is Abraham, a man of God. And I just want to talk to the guys. This is going to be a message for everybody because the characteristics that were in Abraham's life are certainly characteristics the Holy Spirit is wanting to cultivate in all of our lives. And I want to encourage you today to uh, listen, whether you're a, a guy or whether you're a gal, a young person or whatever, uh, because I believe these are such important components uh, to really living a successful life uh, and a fruitful life, and Abraham is an example for all of us. Um, you know, uh, we're all going to stand before the Lord someday, give an accounting of our life and being a leader, being a man of God, and all the men, we're going to have to give an account. But it's interesting, I was reading an article today, um, and if you're in the insurance business, you might uh, be able to relate to this. Uh, it's how people find excuses for their bad behavior, not, not stepping up and being uh, accountable to what they have or haven't done. And the following is a series of actual quotes taken from an insurance or accident forms, and these are actual words of people who try to summarize their encounters with trouble. Let me read one. Here's the first one. Coming home, I drove into the wrong house and collided with a tree I don't have. Another one said, the other car collided with mine without giving warning of its intentions. Another one said, I thought my window was down, but I found out it was up when I put my fist through it. Another one, I collided with a stationary truck coming the other way. Another one, a, tra a truck back through my windshield into my wife's face. Next one, a pedestrian hit me and went under my car. That's someone not taking responsibility, right? A pedestrian hit me and went under my car. The guy was all over the road. I had to swerve a number of times before I hit him. I pulled away from the side of the road, glanced at my mother-in-law, and headed over the embankment. Don't know what the mother-in-law looks like. Okay. In my attempt to kill a fly, I drove into a telephone pole. Does any of this sound familiar to some things, some of you are the insurance business? 
Um, I had been driving for 40 years when I fell asleep at the wheel and had an accident. I think what they're saying, they hadn't had an accident in 40 years. I was on the way to the doctor's with rear end trouble when my universal joint went away, causing me to have an accident. That's what you call a misplaced um, uh, modifier, I believe, in English. My car was legally parked as it backed into the other vehicle. An invisible car came out of nowhere, struck my vehicle, and vanished. I told the police that I was not injured, but removing my hat, I found that I had a skull fracture. <laughs> so, I don't know. It, it's interesting, isn't it, how people uh, want to come up with uh, different, uh, different things to blame their own behavior on. How many of you know that when we stand before the Lord, we want to be able to give a good accounting for our life, right? Nobody's perfect, but we serve a perfect Savior, and we can stand before him with confidence knowing that we have done the best we can do. Now, Abraham is a wonderful example in both the Old Testament and also is used in the New Testament as an example to all of us as believers. Do you realize without Abraham, none of us would be here today? It was Abraham's faith that really was perpetuated down through the generations. And when you stop and think about it, Abraham didn't have a Bible, didn't have the Ten Commandments, didn't have church, didn't have anything that was instructing him or directing him other than he had this relationship with God. And that's what the Lord wants for each of us. And I want to encourage you, whether you are a man or a woman here today, to be a person of faith. The first thing we're going to look at today is that Abraham was a man of faith. And all you fathers, grandfathers, and all the church family, we need to be people of faith. Can I get an amen? It says in Hebrews 11, chapter and verse 8, it was by faith that Abraham obeyed God when God called him to leave home and to go to another land uh, that God would give him as his inheritance. He went without knowing where he was going. Now, how many of you know that's faith? He heard from the Lord, and he stepped out on God's word, and he believed the promises of God. Romans, the fourth chapter says that Abraham staggered not at the promises of God. He had faith in God. All the amazing things that God had promised to him, Abraham took God's word for what it was and took it by faith. Even when he was 100 years old and had not had that son of promise yet, the Bible says he believed that God was able to fulfill his word, even though his flesh was at that point dead or enable, unable to produce a child. And yet God caused that miracle to happen. So the scripture says in Romans 4, 3, Abraham believed God and God counted to him as righteousness because of his faith. I want you to know something. We are saved because of our faith. Amen? It's not what we have done. It's not our performance. We are saved because we have faith in the cross and faith in a God who loves us and gave his son for us. And that is what is going to open heaven's door for us is our faith. For by grace you are saved through faith, not of works lest any man should boast, Ephesians tells us. So thank God that we are to be people of faith. And everything God asks you to do is going to require faith. We have to believe the word of God is the word of God. We have to believe by faith that Jesus is the son of God. We believe by faith that he rose again from the dead. We believe by faith he's coming again. Hallelujah. We believe by faith that heaven's a reality and a home of the soul. And it all will happen because we put our faith in a, in a God who cannot lie and his word that is absolute truth. So let's be a person of faith. Look at your, your neighbor and say, you need to be a person of faith. Amen? Be a person of faith. And faith is an amazing thing. Secondly, uh, Abraham was a man of relationship. He had a relationship with God. I've already talked about this just a little bit, but it says in uh, James chapter 2 and verse 23, let's look at this scripture together. And the scripture was fulfilled which says, Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. There it is again. And he was called the, let's say it together, friend of God. Fanny Crosby wrote back in the 1800s, what a friend we have in Jesus. You know, it's an amazing thing that God uh, invites us to be his friend. A few years ago, a very popular worship chorus was, I am a friend of God. And uh, it's a great, great truth in Scripture. 
but Abraham had a relationship with God. God doesn't want us to be, you know, separated from him or have good theological uh, doctrine and have all the, our ducks in a row when it comes to the scripture. God wants more than that. God wants to be your friend. God wants to be my friend. Three times in scripture, the Bible says that God called Abraham his friend. And this is an example of what God wants for each of us. He wants us to have that deep personal relationship. How many of you have at least one good friend in life? You have at least one good friend. I'm a little concerned about some of you. Their hand didn't go up. You don't even have, well, you, you can at least have Jesus, all right? Get, that, get your hand up if you know Jesus. You, you got the best friend ever, right? But it's wonderful to have a friend, isn't it? You know, a friend you can call at any time. You know that they're going to believe the best about you. They're going to help you. They see you. In your, you don't have to be uh, on guard about what you're going to say if it's a true friend. In fact, uh, Pastor Rosemary was just mentioning maybe next week we can get this done, but Greg and Sandy Mundus put a little um, uh, blog, uh, a video blog on uh, Facebook thanking the, the many people that prayed for him, 40 days on a ventilator uh, battling this uh, um, uh, Wuhan flu and uh, the Chinese uh, biowarfare virus that was sent upon us. Sorry, that's just my opinion, but I believe it's right. But anyhow, for 40 days he was on a ventilator, three times almost died, and he's back and uh, heading up our uh, Assemblies of God World Mission program still again. And uh, but Greg and I are friends. We go all the way back to Bible college, and I can call Greg. At any, in fact, I called him when he first got home, and I said, I didn't know if you're taking any, any calls yet. And he goes, he said, I'm taking a call from you. And uh, we're that close. And he could call me at any time. I could call him at any time. We could share anything in the world uh, with each other. Isn't it wonderful to have a friend like that? You know what I'm talking about? A true blue friend that uh, you may have haven't seen him for a year, but when you see him, you just pick right back up like nothing has ever changed. Well, I want you to know that is the relationship that God wants with all of his kids. Amen? That's what he wants for you. He wants you to have that close relationship with him. Uh, that's what Fanny Crosby was writing. What a friend we have in Jesus. No one closer. No one who knows us more. No one who loves us more. And you can have that kind of relationship. And Abraham had that kind of relationship with God. Now the scripture goes ahead in 2 Chronicles verse 20 and verse 7 says, and we'll put it on the screen, are you not our God who drove out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel? Now this was a part of a prayer by one of the uh, uh, Jewish kings that was praying when they were being attacked by an enemy. And notice what he says, are you not our God who drove out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel? and gave it to the descendants of Abraham, your friend, forever. Isn't it wonderful to know that Abraham was God's forever friend? Even Israel knew what kind of relationship that Abraham had. Abraham was your friend forever. He had that kind of relationship with God. I want you to know God desires your heart he desires your heart more than anything else. He wants to be that kind of friend that sticks closer together to you even than a brother is what Proverbs says, right? He's the kind of friend that is even more trustworthy than a brother. And a brother is many times very, very close. But he wants to be your forever friend. And uh, you have that kind of relationship with him. Just let that marinate in your spirit just a little bit. And then the, the third time it's mentioned in Scripture that Abraham was a friend of God, is found in Isaiah 41 and verse 8. And here again, it's on the screen. But you, Israel, are my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the descendants of Abraham, my friend. God said that. Abraham is my friend, and you're the descendants of my friend. I want you to know, dads and granddads and everybody else, moms and everyone, if you have a relationship with God, you not only will affect yourself, but you're going to affect the children that come after you and the grandchildren that come after you. You will bring blessing upon your entire family because of that close relationship you have with God. Now, I would just imagine there are some that are here today that you're a Christian because you had a praying grandfather, you had a praying grandmother or mother or father, 
and you were, you were uh, certainly affected by their life for God and by their testimony. And I want you to know when you have a relationship with God like that, it's not just about you, it's about everybody who's coming after you. It's all that is in us. That's why I love that song you sang today right out of Scripture. Lord, don't just bless us, but bless our children, our children's children, and let that go on to a thousand generations. And if the closer your relationship is with God, the better relationship, Dad, you have with the Lord, the more blessing that is going to flow upon the family of God, upon your family. Amen? Well, if you believe that, give the Lord a big praise offering. All right, let's not patty cake about it if you believe that. Your relationship affects not just you, but everybody who's coming behind you. And isn't it good to know that you're God's forever friend? Amen. Forever friend. Isn't that one of the, isn't that one of the post things they put on Facebook? Um, uh, forever friend or best friend or all that stuff. Well, God wants you to join his Facebook page and be his forever friend. Hallelujah. Thank you for that one Amen. Abraham also was a man of obedience. I need to hurry through that. He was a man who learned to quickly obey God. Amazing. You see, you have to have faith before obedience really can kick in. He believed God, and then he obeyed God. I want to encourage you. God's never going to ask you to do something that he won't be there to encourage you and give you the strength to do. He will give you the ability to do what he has called you to do. God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the ones that he calls. Amen. He enables us and helps us and pours grace upon us. But look at Genesis 26 and verse 5. It says, because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge and my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. Now, this is interesting because Abraham lived before the law. Abraham lived before the word of God was written, before the Ten Commandments were even given. And yet he said he obeyed my voice. There it is. Abraham had such a relationship with God, he knew when God was speaking to him. You know, I, I just have a suspicion. Sometimes we don't really pray like we ought to pray because you know why? Especially men. You know why we don't pray? We're, pray, we're afraid God's going to talk to us. We're afraid God's going to ask us to do something that's not going to be real comfortable. Right? But notice what it says. Oh, don't take it down just yet. Can we put it back up, the scripture that was up there? He obeyed my voice. That's the first thing. What is God asking you to do? What is he asking you to do with your life? He obeyed my voice. He kept my charge. In other words, he heard my voice, and when God said, do this thing, he did it. Do you remember when the Lord spoke to Abraham, and he was having trouble with his, uh, with his nephew, and uh, God said, here's what you do. You, you give him a choice. He can have all the plain that goes up to the sea by where Sodom and Gomorrah is, or you can take the high country. And uh, so, so Abraham chose, uh, let his nephew have the, the choice, and then uh, Abraham took the Where did he get that? God told him that's how you handle this conflict. When there is conflict, he did what the Lord said every time. I want you to know if you want to be a successful Christian, Pray until you hear the voice of the Lord, and when you get direction from the Lord, obey it and walk in it and watch what God will do. Amen? The commandments came out of this relationship, this, the statutes and the laws. God put the law in his heart. You see, God has always wanted to put the law in our heart, not just on a table of stone. Let me tell you something, putting the Ten Commandments back in the courthouse is not going to change America, but allowing God to write his laws on the heart of flesh and the lives of people and transform their lives, that is what will change America. Amen? Not have them written up where people can see them, but have them written in the heart. That's what changes us when uh, we no longer have to be, uh, you know, uh, pushed by externals, but it's the inside of us that has changed. So he was a man of, of obedience. Hebrews 11, 8 says, by faith, there it is again, Abraham obeyed. Remember, faith always comes before obedience. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place which he knew he would receive as an inheritance, and he went out not knowing where he was going. That's amazing, isn't it? He stepped out in faith. He just went and did what God said. You know, many times God's not going to show you the whole uh, story in, in one moment, but he's going to give you the first step. Take that first step. Then take the next step. 
and take the next one. And that's what Abraham did until he received the inheritance. And I want you to know that Abraham is an example to all of us of what it means to live the Christian life. Hello. Abraham is held up in both the Old Testament and New Testament as an example to all of us. This is how we live the Christian life as a, as a person of obedience. Let's step out and do what God has called us to do. Amen. And uh, the old hymn, Trust and Obey, for there's no other way in our hymnal is a great, great resource. That's what God wants us to do. Let me move on. He also was a man of commitment, the angel of the Lord. This is in Genesis 22, verses 15 through 16. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your only son, your son, your only son, that, uh, you know, he goes on. What was happening? You know that story. Isaac was born, the son of promise, uh, after Abraham was 100 years old and Sarah was 90 years old, and it was a miracle that that son was born. And God asked for that miracle son to be offered up at Mount Moriah where many centuries later Jesus would be offered up as the son of God who would be taking away the sins of, of the world, the Lamb of God. But in that moment, uh, Abraham obeyed God, had the knife uh, ready to thrust it into the heart of his son and offer him as a sacrifice. And God saw his commitment that he loved God more than anything else. We know from the book of Romans that the Bible says that Abraham believed that God was going to be able to raise his son even from the dead, that if God asked him to do that, that he would cause a miracle to happen even if he did kill his own son. What faith, what commitment that is. What kind of commitment do you have for God today? Uh, dad, granddad, you're, leaving, you're either leading your kids toward heaven or you're leading them toward hell. Amen? Let's be, let's be, let's be strong. Let's man up. Let's, let's make a commitment. We don't need uh, wishy-washy, blow-hop, blow-cold uh, Christians the day we're living in. It's time we're all in. It's time that our homes are different than the homes. And we heard Debbie say today that we used to pray and when the kids were home as a family and we'd bless them on the way out as they went to school. That is what your home ought to look like. That's not just for preachers. There ought to be communion being had in your home and especially during this time when it's a little difficult for us to do communion like we normally did. Uh, Dad, set the communion table and gather your kids around and remind them what Calvary's all about and, and be a person of commitment and say, you know, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. I, the world may be going crazy, and it is going crazy, and everything is coming unraveled, but not in my house. No siree, we, we love Jesus, and we're going to serve him, and I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to lay my hands upon you. Get your grandkids together sometime and and lay hands on each and every one of them and bless them and bless your sons and your daughters and your in-laws and, and, and pass the blessing on to them and, and let's live for God. Let's live for God. Let's build the altar. I, I, I need, I'm, I'm getting into my next point and I need to finish up. He was a man of prayer, a man of worship. Did you know that you can't, you know, prayer and worship go together, they're twins. Did you know you can't pray without worshiping and you can't worshiping without going into prayer? Come on. Somebody help me preach up here today, right? If you really get into praying, you're going to start worshiping. You start asking God for something, you're going to remember everything he's done for you, and you're going to begin to bless him. And Oh, God, thank you for all the prayers you've answered in the past. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you that you are that good, good father. You blessed us. You brought us a mighty long way, right? They say, I love that in the African-American church. He's brought me a mighty long way. Remember where he found you. Remember what he did for you. And when you begin to worship and praise him, all of a sudden your heart just overflows with thanksgiving and prayer and worship. And Abraham was a man of prayer and worship. He was. He built altars every place he went. He built four specific altars throughout the, the land of Israel. I don't have time to preach about each of those. But the Lord appeared to Abraham and said, To your descendants I will give this land. And there he built an altar who the God who had appeared to him. God gave him a promise, and on that promise, he said, I'm going to give you an inheritance, and this is going to be your land. And I'm telling you what, that covenant is still intact today because Israel is occupying the promised land today just like God said they would, fulfilling prophecy. He told Abraham those many centuries ago, this is your land, and I want you to know on the testament 
and the covenant of God's word, Israel is there today because God said so. Hallelujah. Amen. And we are Abraham's descendants. And I want you to know that's going to be the future capital of the world. Yeah. Jesus is coming back to rule and to reign. And, I, and you know those bandanas that we gave out last Sunday, and if you didn't get one, get one. They're good witnessing tools, man. I, I tell people, I say, can you read my bandana? Jesus is coming. And they go, oh, yeah, I like that. I like that. I couldn't tell what it said. And uh, I said, you know, and they say, well, the way the world's going, it looks like he could come at any moment. Next thing you know, you're talking to somebody about Jesus. And are you ready? We, you know, are you get ready? With, we get ready for the coming of the Lord. I'm telling you what, this thing's getting ready to wrap up. Something weird is happening all across the globe. There's sinister uh, works uh, going on around the world, but I want you to know it's pointing us to the fact that Jesus is coming soon. Amen. He built an altar. Is there an altar in your home? Amen. Is there an altar in your life? I'm not talking about a physical altar. I'm not saying you got to get down on your knees for 30 minutes. Uh, you know, I'm not trying to be legalistic about it, but I'm saying, are you living in 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, praying without ceasing, talking to God, building that altar and, and, and communicating with him and living your life in his presence? That is where the power is. That is where the blessing is. That is where the joy is. He went on his journey from the south. I'm reading out of Genesis 13, 3 now. As far as Bethel, the house of God, to a place where his tent had been at the beginning between Bethel and Ai, to the place of the altar which he had made there at first, and there Abraham to the place of the altar which he made. And, I'm sorry, and Abraham called on the name of the Lord. The first thing that Abraham did when he came to that land where he didn't know where he was going, when God said, this is a land as he built an altar and he said, God, I'm gonna need your blessing, I'm gonna need your help. And I want you to know the first thing that we do we every day is we need to be in the presence of God. The first thing, Dad, you need to do is pray for your family, pray for your wife, pray for your kids. Be a man of prayer, be a man of worship, demonstrate it, show it. So I've had guys tell me, well, I'm just not a very good prayer. I let mama do all the praying. I'm just not very good with my words. Quit being a derelict. Quit being a pansy. Man up. Pray. The sweetest thing that you can do that your, fa your family will remember is, my dad prayed for me. My dad prayed over us. Your wife will love to hear the words of faith coming out of your mouth as you pray God's blessing upon your family. Amen. We have not because we ask not. Be a man of prayer and worship. And that's for all of us. That's for women as well, too. Let's seek him. Well, I'm just not that spiritual. Well, get spiritual. Grow up. Come out of babyhood. Walk with God. Hallelujah. Come on, walk with God. Enoch walked with God and was not, right? He got so close to God, and that's what God wants. Be his friend. Be his friend. It came to a place of which God had told him, this is Genesis 29, 22, 9, and Abraham built an altar there and placed wood in order and he bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. That was an altar of commitment. Abraham was building altars and digging wells all the time, right? What an example, what an example. I titled this message, Abraham, man of God, but I think maybe I should have entitled it Abraham, friend of God because I believe that's what God wants for every one of us to be, have that close personal friendship. You know, and, and um, when you love God, you know what? When you really love the Lord, this world loses all of its attachments. You know, I, I am not enamored with this world. How about you? It's not going to be hard for me to leave this world of sin and see the lights of heaven and head home and say, oh man, I'm going home. This world is not our home. We're just passing through, right? But while we're here, let's make a big imprint and big footprint for Jesus. Let's be like Abraham. We're here because of Abraham's faith. Who's going to be here in the next generation because of your faith, right? God wants to use you. Would you stand with me all across the room? Amen. I've, I forgot what song we're doing. Before. We'll come to the altar. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're going to do Come to the Altar as an altar call song, okay? I requested it, forgot it, <laughs> forgot the title of it. But I want, just for a moment, I want you to build an altar. I want you to build an altar in your heart, an altar in your spirit. And 
All these things we're asking to do, this is not legalistic. You cannot do it by yourself. But would you ask God to help you to be a person of faith, a person of commitment, a person of relationship, that you would have that desire to walk in the presence of God every moment of every day to be his friend, that you would be that person of prayer and worship that is changing the world, that your home would look different than the other homes. Our marriages would be filled with the joy and the presence of God. And to lead us in that chorus and, or that song as we sing it, then I'm going to pray over all of us. But, but let's just make this an altar song in our own heart, all right? Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar. Yes, Lord. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, Go ahead. Go ahead. Is it he wonderful? Sing hallelujah. Christ is risen. Bow down before him. Oh, let's do that. For he is Lord of all. Sing hallelujah. Christ is risen. Let me sing that much again. Bow down before him. Bow down before him. For In this moment, would you just bow before the Lord at that altar you've made in your own heart? And first of all, if you're here and you've never come to the altar for forgiveness, that's where you need to start. And uh, if you're here and heads are bowed and eyes are closed and you've never given your life to Christ, you can come to this altar right now and make sure that things are right with you and Him, that your sins have been forgiven, washed away by His blood. And when no one's looking around, if you're not sure that you're right with God, would you just slip your hand up real high and say, Pastor Doug, would you pray with me? And we're just going to pray with you right where you're at. If you're not sure, just slip it up real high. Maybe everybody here knows the Lord, but if you aren't sure, we want you to have that assurance in your heart. Okay. Okay, can I see the hand then of everyone here, whether you're up? a man or a woman or a young person, and your heart's desire is, God, I want to be like Abraham, the father of our faith. I want to be a person like that. Give me the grace to be that kind of, of a believer. Just raise your hand toward heaven and say, that's my desire. I want to pray over you today. Amen. Just lift your hand up. I believe that probably ought to be every one of us, and that's, that's who we want to be like, right? Heavenly Father, I thank you for Abraham's life. I thank you, Lord, for his faith who believed hope even against hope, it says, that you were able to do the impossible. And because of him, Lord, we are all here today. Lord, we are all sons of Abraham by faith. And Lord Jesus, it was through Abraham's lineage that Jesus came into the world to become our Savior and bring us home to our true Father, Abba Father, Jehovah, our Lord God, and how we bless you today. And Lord, I pray now for supernatural grace and for the blessing of the Lord as we sang that blessing over your people today, Lord. We just ask that blessing now, Lord, to be upon every one of us, that, Lord, that we will follow in Abraham's footsteps, that we will be the friend of God, and that, Lord, we'll draw even closer to you and closer to you. We'll walk with you so close that like Enoch, Lord, one day we're just going to walk right on home with you. 
And Father, I ask that blessing upon every person here today. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen. Let's give the Lord another big praise offering. Can we do that? We bless you, Lord, today and thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you, Lord. You are that good, good Father. Amen. And you never fail. Praise God. Once again, thank you for joining us today. I trust you received something from God's Word that you will not only hear, but will apply to your life. And I won't ask you to do something that I won't do too. And I will ask the Lord to help me to live for Him every day. You know, once again, if you have a prayer need, call that number at the bottom of the screen. And we just want you to know that we love you. We thank you for joining us today. And God bless you. Maranatha.